ball rolling. We need to start dealing with some of these issues. For now, if it's with ISL to get the land use updated, the mapping, let's, let's go with that and then look at other projects as we go along. I mean, the more we stall, you know, it's going to be, you know, what did what 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 did uh, what did you tell Quentin you haven't done in three months? There's a steak yeah. dinner, For, you know, and he's tasting his steak right now. <laughs> I, I think we need to make a decision on this, move forward, and and we can look at Mackenzie and something else for other other things. Well, I also know that we had two. Uh, citizens in here talking about our policy and not following it. And uh, they were pretty adamant that if we had a policy, why aren't we following it? And the policy is tender. Yeah, I wonder, when is our policy that it has to go out for tender? I don't know the amount. Mr. Tamaklo? Uh, do you have the tender policy there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, call for proposals. When seeking professional services or goods that cannot be rigidly defined under tender specifications, the management shall prepare a request for a proposal. The RFP shall generally describe the work of the scope of work or goods entailed and would invite written proposals from prospective suppliers with details and methodology to be utilized, time frame for completion, and estimated cost for completion of the outline work. The management staff can stipulate an amount for the services to enable a more Fair evaluation of proposals. RFP should also contain a privilege clause, clause similar to that used in public tenders. Openings. All proposals solicited by the town shall close on Thursday at 2 p.m. The office coordinator shall receive all tenders at the finance office and the town office, who shall stamp the time and dates received on the envelope and place the tender in the tender box. No proposals shall be received by fax or amendments to proposals will be accepted with the proposed price of Dr. Beale. Facts. At the point of time for opening, the department head and the chief minister officer and one of the persons selected by CAO shall meet in the committee room with council chambers at the town office. The department head will bring in the tender box, which is in the seal, the town office staff box. Okay, so yeah. I think we've got that's just the process now. Yeah. And the process was that there should have been a tender. A request for proposals should have gone out. So I don't think that this is something that we can deal with. Can you, can, yes. I was yes? going to say, could you read the first part of that again, please? <laughs> just, just to clarify, a request for proposal is different from a tender. A tender is something that Public Works submits when they've got a project. A request for proposal doesn't have rigidly defined specifications. And I believe the um, request for proposal we probably sent a letter to ISL and they provided us with a proposal. So we only asked one person though. Mr. Long, or Councillor Long, did you have a question? So in, can you read the first paragraph of... When seeking professional services or goods that cannot be rigidly defined under tender specifications, management shall prepare a request for a proposal, RFP. The RFP shall generally describe the scope of work or goods entailed and would invite written proposals from prospective suppliers which details the methodology to be utilized the time frame for completion and an estimated cost for completion of the outlying work. And so we did do that. We, we did it for one person. Praise. And this, this is readily identifiable what is required of them and the work that they're giving back to us is time frame, everything is there. So, so does this meet then that first paragraph where it says where it can't be readily identified? This has been readily identified as to exactly what they need to do and what they're going to do for us. So am I misreading or misinterpreting that? Yes. It's still pretty general. I mean, when you take a contract, you look at a contract or a proposal that we submit for our capital projects, they're much more detailed. They're like 100 pages. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, in professional services, that's about as good as it gets because there's they don't detail everything that they're going to do. They just have a general idea, and then they give you a deliverable at the end. 
I think the biggest the biggest issue here is we, we just got one. We got one request for proposal and council wants administration to go out and get another one. All right. Any other any other questions? So the motion is to approve the attached proposal and to move the um, the money into the account, the, uh, increase the professional services account. So we're looking at a twenty-seven thousand dollar contract award. Is there any uh, any other uh, questions or um, uh, points other than that? Yes, Councillor Carrier. Um, as much as I hate postponing things off and off and off, is there any way we can postpone this to next meeting so we can clarify whether? We have to take this to tender or not, so we know whether we're not breaking policies or breaking bylaws well, or whatever. Who would who? So we could clarify. Who would we? Clarify, who would be back, clarified? Bring it back to at the next meeting if we are or if we're not breaking a policy, because I sure don't need to get another earful from citizens from us breaking our own policies. Councillor Panasic. I agree with you. I don't want to break the policy, but I think it would be probably easier just to go out and get another request for proposals from one or two more companies so we could make a motion after that says we'd like administration to get two more requests for proposals or at least request somebody to submit requests for proposals and see if we get them before next meeting. And if we do, great. If we don't, that's okay too. Then we we can deal with the one that we have, and that would be at the next meeting. We could bring it right back, so we can have a fairly quick turnaround on those. All right. Any other questions? I think we've beat this one enough. So we have the motion. All in favor of awarding this contract? Opposed. <laughs> the motion is defeated. Did Councillor Panasic want to make another motion? Uh, Councillor Carrier will make that motion. No, I'd like to uh, just interject here, make a motion to extend meeting past 11 o'clock. Well, this is going to wrap up at 11. Too late. You have seconds. Have seconds. Call the question. All in favor of extending the meeting? Uh, I think it's going to. I know you're not going to, so we're good. Opposed? No. Nope. So it's going to end at 11. So another motion on this, um, Councillor Panasic. I would make the motion that administration contact a couple of other companies, one of which would be McKenzie, uh, to see uh, to request a request for proposals on dealing with direct control or re or changing the land use bylaws. And when you're ready, can you read it out, please? to create a request for a proposal further to the financial policy number and all of that up, uh, to review and change the Town Five Prairie Land Use Bylaw number 22005. Satisfied? All in favor? Motion is carried. Next item of business is the um, Citizens Monument, page 78. Uh, staff Sergeant we are did. we need to make no we haven't received different information yeah thank you oh all right then um well actually i wonder the next one councillor did that i move that we receive the thank you 
<laughs> oh, uh, Sergeant Myron Friesen's May 2014 report for information. Thank you. All in favor? That's carried. Public Works. Did we make a motion on that one? <laughs> no, I want the next one. I'll make the motion the council received the May 2014 Public Works report for information. We have done that already. Yeah, oh, did we already pass yeah. that? Oh, okay. Perfect. Next one. Yes, Councilor Ann. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that council direct administration to advertise for the nomination of citizens of High Prairie area who volunteer their time in our community by way of digital sign in the Town of High Prairie website and hold a presentation for the citizens on July 30th, 2014. Like, what date does everybody like? Well, you know, it, it, putting on the rodeo is, is not a good time. I know. So I think we should actually say uh, um, August 1st is the citizen, uh, isn't that um, civic? That's our, our civic day. August, August 1st? No, I think it's the uh, yeah, no. 4th or 3rd, 2nd or something. 2nd or 3rd. <coughs> but it depends on the ca where the calendar falls. Yeah. It, it's not a specific date. Concert carrier? Uh, this year, Civic Quality is on Monday, August the 4th. Um, now, that would involve overtime on the staff, so I don't know if that's a good idea. Um, you could do it on the Monday, the day before, August, th did you say what day was that? On the August, August 4th. So let's do it August 5th. I'll, I'll reread my motion. The council direct administration to advertise for the nominations of citizens of High Prairie area who volunteer their time in our community by way of radio, digital sign, and the town of High Prairie website and hold the presentation for the citizens on August 5th, 2014. What date? August 5th, 2014. Okay. People are satisfied with that? All in favor? It's carried. Um, next item. Councillor Empter. The Council Direct Administration to write a letter supporting the construction of a permanent facility expanding the CRC's early childhood development facility for the mayor or deputy mayor's signature. Any questions on this one? Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. The next item of business is the uh, town manager's report. Are there any questions? Um, I guess, are there any questions on this? Okay. Councillor Carey? Um, it's a touchy subject, I guess, but I would have to agree that why wasn't the, uh, for the rotation of chair, it was asked why, it was asked to have three other towns brought forward at the meeting, it has not been brought forward, so I'm a little disappointed that when we ask for something, again, it's not being brought forward. So my only concern is we need to really work on that. We're asking for comparisons to other towns, we're asking information. I think we really need to have, make sure we get that information. Did you, you mean council asked me to do that? Are you saying council asked me to do that? As far as I recall, during the meetings, Adam Mayor did ask for three other towns be brought forward and I didn't see it in here so Mr. Tamako yeah uh, just a clarification this was never at a council meeting there was no resolution to administration to bring this forward this was an email request by the mayor and that's what it was it was not a council direction <laughs> and then I'll apologize Councillor Amke then my comment would be so unless directed through a council resolution you won't work with council? This is not a council request. Okay. That's true. It was a member of council. So it was to, one so individual. I have to use my judgment. Anytime we do something, we are using municipal resources. Remember that. It's not my resources. It's municipal time. It's municipal resources. I have to make a judgment call. But when council makes a resolution, it's by law that I have to implement that resolution. 
if that resolution does not um, negate against provincial or federal legislation. Councillor Ampton? So do you have a preferred process? I want to work with you, Kelly. So I just want to find, do you have a preferred process then if, if I want to find information on something, uh, should I CC you on it? And then rather than waiting for the second or the fourth Wednesday, should I CC you on it, send it to the rest of the council to, to get a general acceptance so, or? If you, if you realized, I mean, there were two um, RFDs that came. The one that you requested for seed cleaning plant. Correct. Was clearly understood what Correct. you wanted. There was one about timesheets, clearly understood, put it on there. When you take some of these requests that came my way, I mean, an hour or two uh, on Wednesday, uh, it says procedure for agenda items. What am I supposed to do with that? There is no background. There is no rationale. There's no proposal. So I treat them like inquiries. Okay. And so when, this is the rationale behind council agenda packages. We bring things to you because we cannot do them and we're looking for authorization. The Johnson report said clearly that try to remove the four information items, which means that the more discussion items that we put on the agenda, the more time ineffectively that we use. So when you send something to me and it has no proposal behind it, I'm asking myself, is this just an inquiry? Let me pack it into my report. And if council really wants it, then you make a resolution for me to, it's almost like a notice of motion, because I'm debating as to what you really want. Okay, I'll give you a quick example. I would like an in-camera personnel agenda item. The procedure bylaw states that there's got to be a background, there's got to be a rationale. I don't know what this is about. How do I put, and please, I'm not being disrespectful. No, 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 no. This is good. We are, when we live here, we are all municipal residents. Can you imagine the citizens, anybody coming and saying, put a legal item without any background? The town procedure bylaw is supposed to create equity, some kind of direction where everybody is treated fairly. That we can go back and say, you know what? I didn't do yours, but I did this because this is what town's procedure bylaw says. And that's the kind of difficulty we run into when there's no background, there's no rationale, and there's no proposal. And that's how the difficulty that you find over here. So what, we, what I try to do is I try to answer the questions, and you find all the answers here, by rushing back to all my department folks and say, can you give me something to address this? And if council finds it in its infinite wisdom to say, Kelly, this issue has been discussed, we want it as part of the agenda, then I can pack it on as an agenda item. This is the kind of thing that goes through my head as I begin to build agenda <coughs> packages. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there any other comments on the CAO's report? Councillor Panassa? Uh, I, I guess uh, it's just in comment of looking at some of these buildings and the asset number. And, I guess I just want to be clear. It says estimated replacement date for the museum is 2017. That's, that doesn't mean that the museum has to be changed. That's actually when the depreciation, I'm assuming, ends on that item, right? Like it, it's no longer being depreciated at that time. It's close to the end of its life or, or the 50 years that they're using for depreciation on here. but. Um, I think it's important that we get a good feel for what maintenance is required on those buildings when we're doing our 10-year uh, capital plan or when we're doing our capital plan because I know some of these buildings need more and that needs to be focused. And I know it's, uh, we heard that it was going to be done for the next time around, so I just wanted to make that comment that we do need to know on these facilities, what needs to be done to keep them going? Councillor Long? Okay, that's good. Councillor Danaka? Um, no, good. Councillor Rose? No, I'm good with this report. Okay. So, do you think there's any value in the preparation of a, of a five year maintenance plan for the buildings? 
I think that's supposed to be built into the 10-year plan, right? Like that's, I don't see the value of a separate plan. I see it being built into our 10-year capital plan that this is the maintenance that needs to be done. So is there- And identified on it. Is there any, uh, is there a direction on that in, um, in the 10-year plan? Is it already included in the 10-year plan? Yeah. It, it, oh, no. Should I help Yes. Uh, you? So you're, you are not kind of referring to replacements more than just maintenance, because maintenance is more administrative. So you're trying to plan for replacements. Well, our major maintenance. I mean, if we have to put a roof on the uh, library, I think that's a major maintenance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's been yes. that, that was capitalized. So what the CEO was trying to do is, is to say between what's repairing maintenance, which is an operational expense, which is approved in the operating budget, and capital expenditures, like the repair of the Moose Tooth still, and it was a capital project. Um, the 10 year capital plan just talks about public works uh, the sewer, the water, the roads natural gas. We don't have a 10-year capital plan for our buildings. This is as good as it gets right now to just tell you what might come up. And as Councillor Panasic mentioned, in 2017, the museum might have to be replaced, but it might not. Uh, this year, that's the estimated useful life. So we might go around in five or 10 years out no, it may need, may need a new roof, in which case that would be capitalized, and that would be included in a, in a five-year capital plan. It's called a five-year capital plan for buildings as opposed to a five-year maintenance plan, because we do that on an annual basis. Councillor Amter? So have we budgeted for building replacements? There is no capital plan for buildings. No. Okay. Okay. In order to do that, we have to bring in an engineer like the CL Siemens and have them do their research and assess and the condition of the buildings and prepare a, now I would suggest a 10 year building okay. capital plan as opposed to this one. Yeah. So, is there any value in doing that? <coughs> I think it's something that we should work for towards. Uh, the 2015 budget deliberations. I think, I mean, administration should be working on that. Do we need a, a resolution, a motion to? Uh, to add it to the agenda for next time? To add it to the agenda for next time? Um, but like the budget, sorry, not next. No, to you know, a motion. Maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, give us direction to investigate the preparation of a 10 year capital plan to investigate. I think that will give us some legal room, some wiggle room to start thinking through uh, 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 engineers and who to bring on board to provide some kind of basis of evaluation that we can bring back to council for some more thoughtfulness. Councillor Amter? I'd like to make a motion that council direct administration to investigate a 10-year plan for... Oh, after oh. my report, please. Wait. After my report. We've got to approve the report to my report. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Um, is have there to any deal other? With the motion on the floor. All right. Um, I, I did have a question about grass cutting, but I'm not sure if this is an issue that you want to discuss any further. I think it was uh, um, brought up by by uh, okay. Councillor Walker or Mr. Walker. Um, I did have complaints from citizens saying that. The, their grass, they cut their grass and then the uh, town comes and scalps it down to nothing and they have to reseed because it's it's been, uh, and then they're wondering, well, why are we wasting money on that? But it's up to you, council, if they want to discuss that or do a policy. Uh, I know the town of Valley View has a policy that residents maintain their own uh, land in front of their house. We don't have a grass cutting policy. We don't have a any policy about unsightly premises or mm. or anything like that? Well, we, do, uh, we do have a policy, but not with respect to the boulevards, as you were just as you mentioned. Uh, so we have nothing on uh, a bylaw that says that citizens are required to cut the grass in front of their house. I may have to look into it, not on top of my head. Okay, I, I, I believe we do. 
Yeah, there is. So if we have that bylaw, why but, but, are we? But their property, not the grass on town property in front of their house. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, the town of um, the town of Slave Lake does have that, and it talks about the um, um, the property that goes right up to the center of the highway, and that's specifically it's covered everything in front of their house up to the center of the highway in front of their house. So you're talking snow removal too. To go on this the is grass cutting. No, this is grass cutting. That's what their policy is for. Huh. For grass cutting. So I'm just wondering what ours says. Yes? Um, it's in our unsightly and a nuisance policy. And I'm just pulling it up right now. It is available on the website for people to view under our policies. I did look there and it uh, didn't uh, load. Well, let's, I mean, while she's digging that up, okay. it's, that's a different issue if we wanted to make another motion on that, isn't it? What you're yeah. talking about. Pretty well. We could, mm -hmm. we could progress with uh, the one motion. And, and is there anything you want to do about the walking trails? Hi, Mother. I thought, uh, Mr. I, yeah, at the intermunicipal negotiating committee meeting, it was something to come back on your agenda to be discussed by the committee. Mm -hmm. I think that could be a fertile ground for the two bodies to talk about it and then decide how you. So we did bring it forward, right? Yeah, I think it's supposed to come back again. I thought they had turned it down. Yeah. At the last intermunicipal meeting? Yeah. Um, we decided that we were going to bring up the. Um, um, negotiating of the intermunicipal agreement and I asked them if they would consider adding the walking trails yeah. Yeah. and they said that they w would add it. I, they, they didn't approve it, right? They're going to add it to that agreement. We're going to negotiate it. They're going to have to get the agreement approved by their council. Oh, okay. Yeah, as part of the intermunicipal cost sharing agreement to talk about it. So that may allow us to make a better decision on what we're going to do with the trail if we have some support. In, in it, didn't sound, it. Yeah, it didn't sound like they had any support. I didn't, at least I didn't think so. According to Mr. Uh, Reed Matthews, he said, well, you're not going to get asphalt or uh, con paving the trails. He basically but said... He looked at, I think they're, they're considering, you know, you have to do something and then have, maybe it's not asphalt, maybe it's to go, that's why I was asking whether we looked into other, other sources. Okay. All right. <laughs> Did you get anything? Mm -hmm. And what does it say? of a property shall maintain all adjacent boulevards in accordance with the provision of provisions of this park. Pardon? An owner or occupant of a property shall maintain all adjacent boulevards in accordance with the provisions of this park, which is vegetation and pest control. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a newsletter in conjunction with the uh, garbage cans. So we do have a, it's a bylaw? It's a bylaw. All right. So I guess that's up to council if they wish to pursue that. It's not. It's, and it's, it's there. It's yeah. there. It's up well, to, to be enforced. To be enforced. Um, the other um, item, the only other item I had was um, uh, regarding the um, um, school bus safety um, motion 409 slash 14. Um, Mayor Cox asks that administration create a policy to deal with requests of a public service nature from organizations wishing to use the Town of High Prairie Utilities build mail outs as a method of distribution. It's carried and then the action is the town should not be sending brochures out as part of utilities mail out for other organizations. I thought the motion was to create a policy. That, yeah. that is the policy. Oh. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> you got it, yeah. That we, uh, we had, we ran into some serious difficulties to, to be dealing with this issue and the school, and I had to mediate going back between my utilities person and the school back and forth, and they don't have the capacity to get the those safety brochures done by one person who is trying to get all the utilities of the town done. Uh, secondly, where does it stop? How many organizations' brochures are we going to be carrying out for 
that the town will be doing. So what I'm getting back from my finance is the capacity is not there, you know, to do each and everybody's work. And then the option they said was that actually you can go to the post office and pay some money and get everything into everybody's mailbox. So the school may have even more money than we do. Why couldn't they pay a few dollars and take the staff to the post office and have it put in? And so that's the kind of feedback I'm getting from my fin finance utilities and that's okay any more discussion on that all right um i don't think is there anything else on the report <laughs> councillor panasic i move that we accept this report for information the cao's report for information all in favor it's carried um then the next item is the citizens monument Oh, we did that one. No, we were perhaps having another motion. No, no, I was just going to make a motion for the... So, Curry? Curry. Yes. Okay. Here for there. Okay. Yep. Did we're we there. Did something that we wanted to make a motion here? That um, uh, we were, we're talking about... Yeah. You were in the middle yeah. of a motion that you wanted to bring up. That's okay. To Investigate the 10 year after plan. Yeah. Did you get all that? I did, yeah. Thank you. Let's uh, <laughs> have you read that back. Um, Move by Council Director that Council Director the Administration to investigate the direction of the 10 year capital plan for the 2015 budget deliberation. Uh, for for regards to building replacement down buildings. Yeah, in reference to Did it say building replacement? It, it does. Well, do you want to read it back one more time? Move by Councillor and Chair that Council Director Administration to investigate the direction of the 10 year capital plan in regard to building replacements for the 2015 budget deliberation. Okay. okay. All in favor? Motion is carried. Next motion. Uh, make a motion that Council receive the Philip J. Curry Dinosaur Museum invitation to attend the key presentation for the Echo County for information. Any discussion? All in favor? Will you be sending them a letter saying no? Or are you just going to? No? Oh, okay. Um, next item is the uh, report, Mayor's report. You've read it over. Are there any questions on it? I move my report for information. All in favor? That's carried. Next item is Councilor Carrier's report. I uh, just have a verbal report at a meeting with the Tolkien representative. Um, it was very informative. Uh, I feel that he has some valid points that they are hoping that the mill was going to reopen. Because why would they still be paying land taxes? Why would they be having employees out there if they were planning on just shutting down? But as far as his his answers, I don't see that mill opening anytime soon. And when we pressed him to see if there'd be a deadline, like what is the deadline? When are you guys going to decide whether it stays open? Are you guys going to open it and close it? When's it feasible? He wouldn't give us an answer. So I feel like it was just a kind of a formal, yeah, we're still around. Thanks for coming out. Have a great day. Did he comment on, um, because a lot of people feel that, that there's a, that they're here mostly just to sort of keep their, secure their, the, the timber or the wood that it's around the area? Did he, he did, comment on that? We did ask him. He, uh, he kind of avoided the question in my mind. He said any wood that does leave the area just happens to be incidentals. For example, the power line, Box. the wood come to the mill, everybody's excited thinking, well, maybe this is a, a shot, but they just staged it there. then. It went on its merry way, so I, I didn't feel very positive at the, at the end of the meeting that the mill is going to open anytime soon, unfortunately. But I would have to commend uh, Madam Mayor for <coughs> getting Topol on board for the golf tournaments. Thank you. That's my report. <coughs> I for information. All in favor? Councillor Danaka. Um, <clears throat> it's just a verbal report. Um, 
met with Mr. Tom Hoffman from Toco on June 14th at Smitty's along with the mayor and councillors Carrie and Emter. OSB prices are still lower than predicted, thus their operations here will remain closed. No definitive answers were given regarding opening as many factors will affect that decision, increase in pricing, long-term sustained pricing. If the plant does open in High Prairie, it will be it will be between one year to 18 months before production actually starts regarding wood being transported to their mill in Slave Lake. Tom assured us that it was incidental product, not wood from the FMA. Um, Tom invited all the councillors to attend the grand opening of their Toco mill on June 19th uh, in Slave Lake. Um, Tom did express his disappointment in regards to the training center at the mill having only nine students participating in the programs offered, electrician, mill rights and welding. I move my verbal report for information. All in favor? Councillor Emter? I think Councillor Danaka gave a, a great report on our luncheon, and Councillor Carrier also. Um, it is entirely non committal, uh, it, it's all reflective on pricing. Um, they believe this mill can be reopened and will be reopened uh, at some time in the future. There was a uh, some discussion on its uh, abilities in regards to the Slave Lake mill um, that is 40% more efficient. Um, however, it, it's reflected on pricing only. Uh, I attended the June 14th lunch luncheon with Toko representative uh, June 24th, which would be yesterday. Um, we conducted two interviews for a new uh, rec director. Um, either one of those candidates, if they had applied previously, would have been hired. Uh, now we have two great interviews. Um, we have one more tomorrow night, and then I believe tomorrow evening we will uh, pick one candidate and make an offer on Friday. Uh, we're moving right along. And all three candidates, uh, one, is, one is great and two are superior, in my opinion. Um, so no matter what happens, we're going to be good. Uh, I move my report uh, for information. <coughs> 